uh, joining us now, House Majority Leader uh, Eric Cantor. Um, great to see you. Good to see you again, uh, uh, Congressman, and, and coming on the show again today. I'll tell you what my question is quickly. Uh, it, some of these loopholes, I saw recently that maybe you go along with, with closing some loopholes as long as, if you did that, we could lower rates somewhere else to offset the increase there. That sounds like you know, everybody wants this. Everybody keeps talking about revenues, 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 somehow raising them. And, and even when the notion was that we could get rid of loopholes and lower and maybe some deductions and lower the rates, but you were still hoping maybe it would result in more revenue. Is the only way that you see tax revenues going up through growth? Is there any way that we could actually raise revenues by actually having someone pay more? <laughs> Joe, you know, we, we all, I think, want to see this economy come back, and the best way to begin to do that, I believe, is to lower the tax rates, simplify the code, get loopholes in the preferences, and broaden the base. Uh, we are trying to get there. The problem is the president, uh, Harry Reid, and others just don't agree uh, in trying to do that without increasing rates. And we just don't believe that you raise taxes when you're trying to pursue economic growth. It's that simple. Uh, so while we do want to put out there as a goal, comprehensive tax reform, so we can actually see a competitive environment to conduct business in America, uh, I think it's more like uh, trying to focus on what we can do together. Yep. Uh, and uh, with, there's been a lot of differences for sure in Washington. I think now's the time we all got to focus on how we're going to get a recovery going. Uh, it was interesting, Congressman, because I, I saw this uh, yesterday, and of all places, in the New York Times, and it was about the, uh, the Democrats' response to certain parts of, of the plan. Uh, Mary Landro, for one, uh, the senator down in, uh, that did, can't go along with some of the, uh, the closing loopholes on oil. But you can, you can pick a lot of Democrats that, that can't go along with this. But Harry Reid, supposedly, according to the New York Times, has the tacit approval uh, of the White House to not bring this up right away, and he knows that the president's going to go to these states, like Ohio, where he's got the Brent Spent uh, Bridge between Boehner's town and between McConnell's state, so he can go there. He's already been to your state. He has a tacit approval to go and, and do this, this political thing that he's doing right now, but, and they know that it's not going to pass the way it is without breaking it up, but they're going to stick to their guns that it's not going to be broken up so that he can go to these battleground states one by one and have these speeches and, and uh, an electioneer, basically. Well, you know, I, I just think that the president really is, is um, suffering from a little bit of a credibility gap when it comes to his suggestions of putting more stimulus money out there. We have been there, done that. Uh, there was never any guarantee uh, that his stimulus plan, it didn't work. Uh, some of us just believe you don't crank out money from Washington and create sustainable jobs. Uh, and that's why we're trying to uh, counter with an approach to tell the president, look, there are some areas that we can agree together on. What is it? He talked to, well, he, he, he talks generally about reforming the bureaucracy and getting rid of regulatory impediments to job growth. Well, each week, we Republicans in the House are putting forward some reg regulatory reform uh, issues. Yesterday, we passed, uh, with bipartisan support, uh, a bill which says to the National Labor Relations Board, you can't go and tell a private company where to expand or create jobs. That's not America. We're about trying to make it easier for capital to flow into this country uh, and for businesses, both large and small, to get going again so that the middle class in this country can get back to work. Leader Cantor, is it in your party's best interest to work with the president or to oppose him at all turns? And remind me, I said well, I, party's best interest, not the country's best interest. Well, well, certainly it is within the country's best interest and the American people's interest that we all uh, drive towards producing results. So, yes, it is in uh, our party's interest to do what's best for this country. Uh, you know, there's plenty of things that we differ on. And I think that most Americans do not expect Republicans and Democrats to agree on everything. Uh, and certainly that has been on display over the last eight months. But I do, I do think, though, that we can uh, rise above that and say we're going to set aside uh, the differences on the big things and try and find areas in which we have commonality. And, and the president talked about doing the trade bills because we know from independent sources, uh, even the administration says, passing the trade bills could result in the creation of an additional quarter of a million jobs in the next 18 months. 
Why don't we do that? The president talks um, middle class tax relief and relief for small businesses, such as business expensing. We believe that we ought to provide some incentives for entrepreneurs uh, to jump back in the game of investment. That's finally, one of the, the that, of yeah, that's finally one of the things that, that he did, because the first one that you said you agree on is less regulation. I don't know. That's kind of a, a red herring. I, 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 the, the second one, uh, yeah, I mean, okay, and then everybody wants to pass that. I, the free trade stuff, he barely mentioned that. There was one sentence, and Al Franken didn't even stand up and, and, and clap when he, when he said that. So, uh, but, but payroll tax, how about all the things, the major parts of his plan, Congressman? You, you finally came up with the business, but you don't like, so no payroll tax, uh, no uh, well, addition, no unemployment insurance. None of those other things are common ground then. You're only giving well, the com all, only common ground is Republican ground that you're talking about right now. Uh, well, 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 that's not true. I mean, you know, the president talks about tax relief. Uh, he really believes that uh, extending the payroll tax holiday is something uh, that that uh, he'd like to see. And we, we we don't believe that taxes should go up on anybody. I mean, that's what we've been about for the last eight months is trying to get our fiscal house in order, stop spending money we don't have, so we have to go tax it or borrow it. Uh, we also believe you let money stay with the people that earn it, it will flow to its most efficient use a lot better than having Washington decide. Eric, so we don't believe you ought to raise taxes. Um, we, we feel we have a better mm -hmm. way uh, to provide incentives and job growth, but we're willing to work with the president on that. What we're not willing to do uh, is to pay for a stimulus program through raising taxes the way he has proposed. If you look at the president's proposals, what he's doing is he is limiting the benefit of mortgage interest deductions, which raises the cost on all, on all Americans that pay over the 28% tax bracket. He is mm. increasing the tax on charitable deductions right now. I don't think anybody thinks that that idea when you've got so many people in need of charitable help. Eric, let me ask you what looks to be the next bailout. The Treasury Secretary in Europe today, uh, what should the role of this country be in what's going to be this European bailout, whether we're doing it directly or indirectly? Should we have a role? Should we be putting U.S. money into this bailout? Well, you know, I think we have seen over the last year or more, um, you know, central banks uh, can provide short-term liquidity uh, to the banking system uh, to allow for the system to continue to function. But if the goal is uh, sustainable job growth, we're not going to be able to see that through flooding liquidity into the markets. And I think that what we need to be focused on for the benefit not only of, of us here at home in America, but through the world, we've got to get our economic engine growing again. That's where our focus is in Congress. That's where we hope the president will finally look to join us and stop trying to say that Washington's going to be able to provide all the hope and economic opportunity for everyone. Congressman? Congressman, it's yes. Richard. Would, hey, uh, Richard. Would you, would you think that there is a glimmer of hope that this super committee would come up with uh, uh, an agreement greater than that which is mandated by the uh, legislation at this point? Richard, you know, over the last uh, you know, six months through the Biden discussions, through the White House discussions, and then finally when we got to the agreement in August, um, I think what we saw is, is there are major differences out of how to achieve uh, overall tax reform. Uh, as we spoke earlier, there are major differences over entitlement reform, health care entitlements especially. Uh, and we've seen enough of the disagreement. So my, my sense is uh, we should always say we'd like to see that, but because there's so many differences, let's try and do what we can to meet the original mission of the group, uh, which is to find the savings and cuts necessary to match the amount that we need to raise the debt limit, see if we can accomplish that, put some wins on the board so that we can continue to go forward trying to focus mm -hmm. on economic growth. Because we all know, no matter what we do on the savings and reduction in spending side, you're not going to be able to manage down the debt and deficit without seeing some significant economic growth here in America. Right. In summary, Congressman, so the president's going to be out pitching this plan as a whole uh, in, all these, in, in all these states. You're telling me outright, <laughs> no way that these taxes, that, that, that the proposals are, are, there's no way they're going to pass 
the house at this point. There's no way that you're going to bring right. those up. And Axelrod says, no, we're not going to break. There's no way we're going to break up any parts of this plan and, and look at it, individual pieces of it. So they're just saying this. They know it's not going to happen, but, but we're going to still see this for the next two weeks or, or, or months or whatever, that they're going to continue to, to, to sell it when there's no way it's going to happen. Is that what you're telling yeah, me? I, I, uh, yes, I, I reject the all-or-nothing approach that the president has laid out. I mean, no, nobody works like that. Washington certainly doesn't. That creates the conflict. That creates and brings on the rancor. We want to work together. We want to find areas that we can agree on and not dwell on the big differences. And by the president saying, pass my jobs bill, uh, you know, he's insisting and saying cram it down people's throats uh, when we, and I don't think the American people, want to see tax increases uh, at a time we're trying to focus on job growth and getting the middle class back to work. All right. Peter, uh, Cantor, thank you. I appreciate your time. What are you doing? What are you, why are you up in Ryan's state? You guys having a handball <laughs> match or something? What are, you, what are you doing up there? No, we're, uh, we're, we're up... Uh, uh, helping some of our colleagues here, Reed Ribble, who is uh, one of the freshmen congressmen, one of the young guns from Wisconsin, as well as Sean Duffy mm -hmm. uh, this afternoon in Madison. So obviously here in a state that is trying to affect real change yeah. uh, and uh, put some sense back into the way met, the government works. Have you met Turner yet? <laughs> I did. I, I, I was with him yesterday. And phenomenal uh, uh, guy himself. And what a phenomenal victory, and I think, for him. Wasn't even but close. I do think... Well, and I think that, or that, 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 the, that the vote in that district demonstrates, you know, people are tired of uh, the kind of spending and borrowing. They're tired of regulators run, run wild and the threat of uh, future tax increases. And obviously in that district, there is evidence that there's a real divide on Obama's policy towards Israel. Towards Israel. All right.